How are you gonna feel my heartbeat if I roll over? I could care less, just roll over. <laughs> nice to be here. I'm a married man. Do we have some married people here? It's good, good for you. I've been married uh, 23 years. And it's still good, it's just very, very different now. Like when I first got married, my wife would say things like this to me. I love when you lie right next to me and we're sleeping. I can feel your heart beat. <laughs> that was 22 and a half years ago. <laughs> the other night she turned, she goes, can you roll over? You're breathing right on top of me. <laughs> it's disgusting, it's hot, it's going on my neck and it feels gross. Who sleeps with their mouth that wide open? It's gross, shut your mouth while you're sleeping. Use your nose, we've talked about this, haven't we? Use your nose. How are you gonna feel my heartbeat if I roll over? I could care less, just roll over. I could pass away in the night, you wouldn't even know about it. I'll live with myself, roll over. Actually, go brush your teeth and roll over. And put some socks on too, I don't want your feet touching me anymore either, they're gross. Your nails are cutting me, it's disgusting. <laughs> Brush your teeth, cut your nails. You know what, you can stay downstairs too. I don't even need you back up here. Let's both get a good night's sleep tonight. So it's just, it's just a little different, that's all. I, uh, my wife doesn't even get mad though, after 23 years. She would rather have these little sayings she likes to use. Sunu favorite saying, did you mean to do that? <laughs> Did you mean to put the clothes in the dryer and then not turn it on? <laughs> yes, I did. I let to let the clothes sit in there for a couple days, get them good and moldy. <laughs> then the kids can wear them to school. No one's gonna wanna hang out with them with moldy clothes and they won't bring other kids back to the house and eat all their food. So yes, I did mean to do that. driving in the car last Valentine's Day, had the radio on, and people were calling in, and they were saying the special things that their spouses do to keep their marriage going. One lady from down south called in, she goes, well, some nights on cold nights, my husband will put my pajamas in the dryer and then warm them up for me. I threw up in my mouth. I couldn't even comprehend that in my married man's brain. My wife's ever wandering our family on a cold night, can you warm my pajamas up? What did you say to me? Can you warm my pajamas up? In the microwave? Yeah, I can do it, I don't think it's healthy. Got, uh, got three beautiful children at home. Here's what I've learned from having three kids. We've got some younger couples maybe here tonight, I want you to remember this. If you're thinking of having children, you're gonna need to get yourself a paper shredder. Because children produce a mass amount of artwork. <laughs> and not all of it is refrigerator worthy. <laughs> and it crushes their little heart if they see their artwork in the trash can. That's why you need to shred it at night when they go to bed. <laughs> Get yourself an industrial shredder because some of this stuff has macaroni glue to it. You're like, <laughs> my kids are older now. It goes by, I miss them when they were younger. I think my favorite age was two. You ever hang out with someone who was two? You were hanging out with the most honest person you will ever meet in your life. Because a two year old, they haven't even learned how to lie yet. You can ask a two year old any question, they will tell you the truth. Did you hit your sister with that block? Yes, I did, daddy. Yes, I did. <laughs> I hit her right in the head. She's watching TV, didn't even see me coming. Bang! Three's a fun age too. If you hung out with people who were three, they tend to ask a whole lot of questions. One of my daughter's favorite questions was just, what you doing, daddy? Hey, hey what, what are you doing, daddy? I'm just making us some breakfast here, honey. Hey, hey, what, what are you doing, daddy? I'm still, still making the breakfast here, honey. Hey, hey what, what are you doing, daddy? Now I'm mixing a drink. How about a little tangeray? <laughs> with that sippy cup. You play hide and seek with a three-year-old? They tell you where they're gonna go hide. <laughs> Dad, I wanna go hide in the kitchen. Okay, I'll come find you at halftime. <laughs> as long as we're all being honest with each other. I had my uh, two girls first, then I had my boy. My boy's great, he just seems a little harder to raise after the girls. I think it was probably the potty training. It was like three, three and a half, we got him out of the diapers. We're at the beach, the whole family, we're having a good time. He comes over and goes, Daddy, I, I gotta go pee. 
I go, you know what we can do, Joe? We can on the ocean. We can pee in the ocean. He goes, we can pee in the ocean? I said, yeah, it's kind of an unwritten law, but let's go. <laughs> so I walk him down. I got those knees. I said, okay, buddy, just go pee right here. He proceeds to pull down his bathing suit, spin around, just start peeing. Hi, mommy! <laughs> yeah, I'm peeing! <laughs> With my daddy! <laughs> I mean, I was peeing at the time, too. I'm like, what are you doing? Didn't really grasp the whole concept. 45 minutes later, now we're up at the blanket, we're doing sand castles. He comes over and goes, Daddy, now nah, go, go pool. <laughs> this day will never end. <laughs> my wife goes, you need to bring them up to the porta potties. They're up there in the parking lot. I did what any good parent would do. Turn to my oldest child and said, I will give you $5,000 if you bring your brother <laughs> to the porta potties. My oldest knows what all the kind of cash at the beach. So there we are up at the porta potties. Now a three-year-old boy cannot really grasp the disgustingness of a porta potty. He was in absolutely no hurry to leave the porta potty. I gotta go in there with him and hold his hands. He got a little bum and I want him to fall in. <laughs> He's just looking around. It is smelly in here, daddy, huh? This place is really, really smelly. A lot of flies in here too. We should take a fly home for a pet. I'm like, we're gonna catch something. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> All right, listen, dad is about ready to pass out. So you need to focus it up here, young man. Can I get you a cup of coffee or a sports page or something? <laughs> Longest 20 minutes of my life. <laughs> Finally, he finishes up. I pull him down. He looks around and goes, hey, daddy, no place to wash my hands in here. I go, you know what we'll do, Joe? We'll go down the ocean, wash our hands in the ocean. He goes, the ocean? I just peed in the ocean. <laughs> we have a dog. My dog is uh, beautiful, too. She's probably the favorite person in my house. <laughs> it's a female dog, and my wife is jealous of all the attention I give the dog, especially when traveling on the road. She goes, the first thing you do when you come in the house of being on the road is you go right to the dog. I'm like, well, if you shake your rear end like that when I walk in the house, <laughs> I will scratch your belly first, huh? Who's a good wifey? Who's a good wifey? I love people and their pets. I love how crazy it's getting. We have a young couple. They live across the street from us. Uh, no children. They have two cats. They're going to Europe this summer for like a month. They asked me and my son to go feed their cats. So we're over there. They're explaining everything to us. They go, you have to give the brown cat a pill every morning. I said, oh, does it have worms or something? I said, oh, no, no. A brown cat is depressed. I said, you're kidding me, really? And I said, no, no, it's very serious. This cat's depressed. I said, how did you know your cat was depressed? So I was walking around and licking himself a lot. I said, you know who's not depressed? Your veterinarian. <laughs> They're printing money when they see you people walking. I shouldn't make jokes, because the kids have a turtle at home that has ADHD. We cannot seem to get his medication straight. <laughs> it's hard raising kids. No one tells you how hard it is to do it yourself. I was home last week with my second little girl, helping her do her math homework, math word problems. She's having a hard time. She put a pencil down. She goes, Dad, do I really need to know this stuff? I said, yes, you do, honey. This is the stuff you need to know as an adult. Then I kind of felt like a liar as I was walking away. <laughs> When's the last time anyone's ever called you? Hey, can you pick me up at the train station? Yeah, what time do you get in? Well? <laughs> I leave on a train out of New York City at 3 p.m. <laughs> and that train will be traveling at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> the train also has two stops. A 10 minute stop in Hartford, Connecticut, a 15 minute stop in Providence, Rhode Island. You tell me what time I arrive in Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> make sure you show your work before you come pick me up. <laughs> My son forgot his lunch last week. I have to bring it down to school. 8.15 in the morning. I'm not much of a morning person. I go walking in the school. I said, I have a Joe Colleton's lunch. Lady behind the counter goes, okay. What is his teacher's name? <laughs> uh, I have three kids. They seem to rotate a new teacher every year. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I have no idea who his teacher is. I was kind of hoping someone here would have that information for me. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't even care if the kid gets the lunch, okay? 
you can eat the lunch, she can eat the lunch. Someone can eat the lunch. All I know is I can't bring this brown bag back to the angry woman who sent me down here at 8.15 in the morning. And listen, between me and you, I don't even know if I'm at the right school right now. I saw some kids, I saw some buses, I took a chance, I came in. Please, just take the lunch from me, will you? My kids seem smart. They get good grades in school, but I worry about their common sense. This is a perfect example. I'm working a cruise last summer. I was flying out on a Saturday, coming home the next Saturday. We're all having breakfast Saturday morning. So listen, I'm flying out today. I'll be gone for seven days. Make sure you help your mom around the house. Good luck on your sporting events. I'll see you next Saturday. Wednesday, my son calls my cell phone. Hey, Dad, you pick me up over Andrews? I said, no, I'm in the middle of the ocean right now. Huzzah, can you get me later? <laughs> so let me ask you a question. It's Wednesday. You haven't noticed I've been gone since Saturday? <laughs> he goes, oh yeah, is mom with you? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I will pick you up later on. How's that sound? <laughs> Goes by fast. My oldest child is in college. We spent all last year looking at schools. One of the schools my daughter wanted to attend was Providence College. Right now, Providence College is $64,000 a year. One year of school, $64,000. And I said to her, what do you want to study if you go to school there? And she said, I don't really know. <laughs> 64 grand. Guess I'll figure it out when I get there. We took a tour of the school. A little girl gave us a tour that goes to school there. She goes, the greatest thing, if you come to school here and live in the dorms, all the laundry is free. <laughs> 64 grand, you can wash your jeans and your socks for free. I said to my wife, if she goes to school there, I'm driving down there every Saturday. And I'm washing the whole family's laundry. I'll collect laundry from the neighborhood and start a small business just to get my 64 grand back. <laughs> my daughter decided to attend American University in Washington, D.C., which is only 62,000, so we're very happy with that savings. <laughs> we dropped her off on September 1st. Very hard, dropping your first child off at college. Then I get a call on October 1st from American University. They said, is this Mr. Carlton? I said, yes, it is. They go, we're calling from American University. We wanna know if we can count on you for a donation this year. I said, has my daughter used up her $62,000 worth of knowledge in the first four weeks? I said, oh, this has nothing to do with tuition. This is a donation we were hoping to get from you. I said, well, you people have some giant balls, don't you? <laughs> I said, right now we have duct tape holding our washing machine together. <laughs> so we're probably gonna hold off on the donation if that's okay. They go, is there a better time to call you back? How about when hell freezes over? How's that sound? <laughs> Just circle that on your calendar. <laughs> Just had a birthday. My, they're not fun. You don't get excited. You know what saying I hate too? People go, oh, 40. It's a new 30. No, it's not. <laughs> when you're 30, you get up and go, oh, why does my knee hurt? Oh yeah, I had a softball game last night and I slid into third. When you're 40, you get up and go, why does my knee hurt? Oh yeah, I slept on it wrong. <laughs> the sheets were tucked in too tight. I go to a physical every year around my birthday. It's a waste of time. My physical is just questions. My doctor asked me all these questions. First one, he always starts with, uh, Mr. Carlton, do you drink alcohol? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Well, how many drinks would you say you consume in a week? Oh my God, I can't give him the real number here. <laughs> I gotta cut that in half, divide by two. Throw a pie number in there somewhere. I'm like, 14, 14, 12, 12, eight, eight, six, four, two, two. A little wine at church, a little wine at church. <laughs> Who's married? Anyone married here? Sir, you married, man? Yeah, how long you been married? 20 years. 20 years, that's great. What do you think the hardest thing 20 years of marriage has been? I still don't know what to get her for her birthday. You don't know what to get her for her birthday? Okay, well, yeah, that's a hard thing. You could give him an idea. It's been 20 years, maybe write something down. You got those sticky notes, just leave them a note. That is hard, gifts are hard. I think the hardest thing on me and my wife's relationship, driving in the car together. If 
I can offer any advice to new couples, take two cars wherever you go. Because when you have two people in the car, you have the driver of the car, and then you have the person that wishes they were the driver of the car. Usually the person that wishes they were the driver of the car likes to treat the driver like they're a complete moron. They like to tell them things like, honey, this light's red up here. You know you're gonna have to stop. Well, thank you, honey. You know, when you're not in the car with me, I usually fly right through these. Our exit is in three miles. We should really be in the right-hand lane now. Two miles, not sure what we're still doing in the passing lane. One mile, we're not gonna make the exit. I'll tell you that right now. We're not gonna make the exit. We got a GPS, you know, in the dash of the car. You plug in where you're going. Little voice comes on, it goes, half a mile, take a left onto Main Street. That's when wife goes in a half a mile, we need to take a left onto Main Street. <laughs> I couldn't do this without you, you know that. You complete me. Even songs I hear on the radio. You ever hear this Aerosmith song? In the song, Steven Tyler sings, I would lay awake just to hear you breathing. Now, first of all, who wants that in a relationship? No, no, honey, you go to sleep. I'm gonna stay up for a while. Watch you breathe. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night, your husband's just standing over you. How you doing? Just been watching you breathe the last couple hours. You seem a little congested tonight. You want me to get you the Vicks Vapor Rub? I'm in bed the other night, my wife's in the bathroom, she's got the door shut. She's putting cream on, taking cream off, whatever the hell she does for that 45 minutes before she comes to bed. And honestly, some nights, I think she's just waiting me out in there. I will file my nails all night. I'm in no rush to get out there. That second glass of red wine should be hitting him right about now. The men are laughing, but they don't even get the joke, do they, ladies? <laughs> I still have guys come up to me after the show and go, I had no idea that was going on. My wife would start vacuuming at 11.30 at night. I could never figure out why. <laughs> Working a comedy club in Aruba last winter. The guy that runs the comedy club called me and said, hey, we'll fly your wife down if you'd like. I said, oh, that'd be great. Let me see if we can find someone to watch the kids. And we're able to find a babysitter. We show up at the airport. And he goes, hey, I just looked at our tickets. Our seats aren't together on the airplane. I said, oh, let me see if I can handle this. I walk up to the counter. I put the tickets down. I said, the girl behind the counter, I just want you to know you're doing a great job. <laughs> and I may seem angry when I walk away, but believe me, I do not want you to touch these tickets. <laughs> I'd like to stay in 3A, I'd like her to stay in 22B. <laughs> Just wanna fly down and listen to music, that's all. It is hard though, you ever been in first class and your wife has to go back to coach? <laughs> like, pull the curtain, pull the curtain. <laughs> you food shop for the family, sir? 20 years of marriage? Yeah. Do you? I don't do it anymore. And you know why? Dad never buys the right thing. Everything dad buys is the wrong thing. So I quit, I'm done. Last time I went food shopping, I bought paper towels. Why? Because it was on the list. And I drag in 36 rolls of paper towels. And my wife goes, are those the paper towels you bought? I said, this blocking dummy of paper towels I'm dragging in the house? I would never purchase this paper towels. I brought these home to show you what other men would bring home to their families. <laughs> My wife goes, you've lived in this house 20 years. You don't know what kind of paper towels we use? I said, I'll do you one better. I don't even know where we keep the paper towels. <laughs> if they're not right by the sink, I use my T-shirt. <laughs> I carried a bagel around yesterday morning and wore the T-shirt all day. <laughs> you still have your spark in your relationship after 27 years? You hope so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got that look in your eye, like hopefully. I got that. A younger comedian thinking of getting married. We're in a green room. He's asking me all these questions. He goes, be honest now. Do you guys still have a spark in your relationship? I start laughing. I go, we have three kids and a dog running around the house. We're pretty sure someone's peed on the spark. <laughs> We're not lighting much, believe me. You know what? I really should take that back. Every now and then, winter time, my wife wore her flannel pajamas to bed, and then I will see some sparks. <laughs> You see someone coming in the room looking like an L.L. Bean catalog? May not be your night, my friend. 
My wife just went out and bought herself new slippers. They actually cover her ankles. Oh, good call, honey. I see some bare ankles come in the room. I'm thinking it's go time. And you, you've got everything covered up nicely right there. I like the hooded sweatshirt, too. No miscommunication whatsoever. You got a whole cocoon of no love going there. Okay, I ask you one more question, since you've done pretty well. Your wife ever sent you back in a party you've just left to get her Tupperware container? Today. today. That happened today. <laughs> where, where did you go this afternoon that you were having a Tupperware container? She just kicked you. She doesn't want you to talk. Don't talk to him anymore. That's done. We left in the car. Someone could break in here. Take the time. I don't know. The women's connection with Tupperware is crazy. We're at a party and we say goodbye to everyone. There's hugs, kisses, we get back to the car. I'm like, oh, I need to run back in, go grab our Tupperware container. Like we left a child behind enemy lines somewhere. I'm like, we'll come back tomorrow. I'll get it later. We're not waiting for tomorrow. We need to get it now. <laughs> got a Yeti cooler here in Salt Lake City? You got a Yeti cooler? You know what I'm talking about? Yeti coolers? Yeah? yeah. yeah. I don't have one. You know why? A Yeti cooler's like this size, $300. Coleman cooler, the same size, $30. I'm over at Buddy's house for a cookout this summer. He goes, hey man, you gotta get one of these Yeti coolers. Keeps the ice cold for three days. I said, we're on your deck right now. We are 15 feet away from your refrigerator. <laughs> for $10, you could've bought an extension cord and brought your whole refrigerator right out here on the deck. <laughs> we could be making ice right now. He goes, no, 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 you need this. If you go on a boat overnight, you need to keep the ice cold overnight. I said, you, you don't own a boat. You have a kayak. That's the only boat you have. Where are you kayaking overnight? You need to keep the ice cold. If I'm gonna spend $300 on a cooler, I wanna put two beers in that at night, come down the next morning, open the lid, and have 32 beers in it. <laughs> it's throwing beers. That's why they're so expensive, honey. It's like a Petri dish of coolers. I ask you one more question before I go, sir. You got some children, 20 years of marriage? Two? What is your name? Clay, what'd you get last Father's Day for a gift? You want me to tell you? You got crap, didn't you, Clay? <laughs> That's my whole point. Dads get crap and no one cares about it. You know what I got? Three children and a wife, I got a nose hair trimmer. <laughs> yep. My whole family's like, we love you, we just think you're disgusting. And when I took it out of the package, my oldest yells out, you can use it on your ears too, Dad. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm sorry anyone has to look at me as I walk around this house. I don't surprise my wife anymore. Mother's Day rolls around. I go, just give me something me and the kids can buy. She goes, you know what? Get me a new tennis skirt. And I said, okay. She goes, hey, make sure you get the kind. It's got a pocket on the side, holds all the tennis balls for you. I said, all right, I guess we can do that. I grabbed my son, I said, let's go. You're gonna come with me, we're getting Mama Mother's Day present. We go to this big sporting goods store. The minute we get there, he runs off. He's looking at baseball bats. Now I'm by myself, just thumbing through women's tennis skirts. <laughs> Little girl who works at the store comes over and she goes, can I help you with something, sir? I said, yeah, I need to get a new tennis skirt. <laughs> you got the kind that hold the balls? <laughs> I probably could have worded that differently. <laughs> she didn't even answer me. She got on the house phone and dialed an 86, which is a code for there is a predator in the store. <laughs> and as security is walking me out of the store, I have to yell, I came with the little boy. Find that little boy I came with. <laughs> hey, you guys been a great crowd. Thanks a lot for coming.